Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India The second lecture of module 7, we started with damp proofing and we thought of covering damp proofing and insulation in this particular module and I also mentioned that we may cover some more depending on how much uh, space we get. So, let us carry for carry on with the second lecture on damp proofing methods and materials. So, we had closed the previous lecture with the different methods where we mentioned the different methods and now we will actually elaborate on each of them. So, the content is particularly the methods in specific and the materials in details. So, first was membrane damp proofing and as you all know membrane is a thin member which will allow which will be spaced in between and will not allow the damp or the water or the moisture to percolate inside of a building. So, it may be placed between foundation to stop groundwater be passing to the upper part or the sub superstructure from the substructure. So, if there is a small gap, the moisture will pass. Hence, the first condition is the membrane should be continuous. It is very difficult to get continuous surfaces, continuous surfaces for long lengths. So, there may be a joint required and if you remember we had understood laps in tiles. We have to plan for overlapping, sufficient overlapping so that the moisture does not enter. The membrane should also be impervious. See these terms we had earlier said in previous modules. Impervious means it will not allow any water to enter, anything to enter. And here water is our enemy and we are not going to allow water to enter. It should be flexible. Why? Because any kind of structural movements, even expansion, contraction of the mother material onto which it is applied will lead to its expansion and contraction. So, the material should be flexible enough to move or to change place without any cracks and it should be capable of taking thermal changes. So, in different climatic conditions there is a variation in temperature that means hot summers, cold winters, day and night difference in temperatures. So, it should not disintegrate or degrade very soon. So, it should have a long life because it will be actually unreplaceable from that place in certain cases. So, it should be withstanding thermal changes. What could be the materials? You see I have jotted down a list for you bitumen in sheet form, bitumen with sand also together asphalt flooring you will get in sheet form, bitumen in paint form. So, a thick paint of around 3 millimeters can be applied and it can give that impervious continuous flexible thermally acceptable material. Other materials which have come presently is ethyl propylene diene monomer which is called in short EPDM sheets. We also have seen use of plastic sheets which are very cheap, PVC sheets also which are behaving similar to that of the EPDM sheets. But yes, EPDM sheets have a longer life. 
we also can depend on metal sheets so metal sheets can also be applied in a sandwiched form inside some material to make the entire structure waterproof other than these flexible material so called flexible impervious continuous material which may be obtained in sheet form roll form etc we can have rigid materials as a membrane like rich mortar 2 is to 3 that is 2 part cement 3 part sand say around 4 cm to up to 15 cm that is a slab planes ka plain cast slab or a concrete slab 1 is to 2 is to 4 you can use as a rigid membrane so concrete acts as a membrane damp proof first class bricks dense stones without any cracks or porousness with rich mortar as plaster or maybe without any plaster can also be considered as rigid material as membrane damp proofing so if your wall external wall is made of very good quality brick which are very less very negligible water absorbing or made of stone which is dense then you may call it as a membrane damp proofing so let us see how the conventional material that is bitumen sheet being applied you can see the picture where you see a person is actually rolling out and rolling out and you see here there is a fire on so this fire has helped this bitumen to get locally molten and that is actually helping it to stick to the surface on to which it is put so you can understand that is this is a roof top and on roof top to make this flat roof totally waterproof because it is going to experience or get the entire rainfall on it it is torch applied that is it is pasted kind of so this locally entire sheet is molten and it is pressed onto the surface and you can see the rolls are having a fixed width so it will obviously have overlaps when one layer finishes you can see there is a line here when one layer finishes the other layer should overlap on top of it and it should be in the direction of this slope you have to remember that too now here in the other picture you see the person is actually fixing the bitumen sheet with torch application after a 90 degree turn and it is being put on the other side this is also at the roof and it is also torch applied and no water should enter you can here see the sharp lines where it is ending so one has to be very careful while application one has to remember of these particular particular points that rolls are to be overlap properly with around 10 cm and that will allow water entry that will avoid water entry joints and laps should be sealed with hot bitumen by torch application and direction of slope should be remembered that is important so that the water flows in the direction of the spout rain water spout you see another picture where a membrane damp proof has been put all around the foundation so this is the membrane damp proof which is separating the foundation from the superstructure so as you can see this picture is 
the application of the membrane damp proof at the foundation. We also see the application of EPDM sheet. Now EPDM sheet is available in large sizes. As the bitumen felt was available in 30 meter length but on which side it was only 1 meter. EPDM sheet may be around 10 meter into 10 meter or even larger. So the problem with it is fixing the membrane on or the EPDM sheet on the entire surface. You have to fix it at certain points. So that is done by fixing screw and plastic washers on the roof surface. These plastic washers help the water not to enter through the holes created by the screw. That is the principle for any kind of screwing system of the roof. So you have to put a washer. But the important point is these are stable at a wide range of temperature. You may see it is minus 40 to 120 degree centigrade. It is resistant to ultraviolet rays of the sun. So if it is kept exposed for years together with a very wide difference in temperature, this kind of sheet will stay. It is also not having any chemical reactions. Coming to the next, it is metal sheets. You can see in this picture that the metal sheet has been corrugated metal sheet has been applied in this particular zone. So this is the wall, this is where the corrugated metal sheet has been inserted when the slab was being cast. This is completely impervious resistant to moisture atmospheric corrosion such materials are to be taken like aluminium lead copper we have learned these non ferrous metals so we are not going for ferrous metals in specific because they if they experience some damp that may get ruined and it may be a flat metal sheet or a corrugated metal sheet so this kind of metal sheet also helps as a membrane damp proofing. Now we come to the next type of damp proofing which is called integral damp proofing. Integral means integrated with the material. It is usually added in the concrete mix or the mortar mix when it is a case of plastering. These materials are usually soapy materials that means it will be repellent to the water. They actually enter into the voids of the concrete and eventually prevents water entry or exit from a system. So, they are water repelling compounds like fatty acids, soapy chemicals, olates and stearates of aluminium, calcium, sodium, alkaline silicates and sulfates and even petroleum. So these may be added in fixed amount. If you add more of it then disintegration of the mother material may happen if you remember plasticizers. So you cannot add as you wish or you think you add more it will be better. So the containers contain the specific amount what has to be added to the concrete mix or the mortar mix against the measurement and you have to follow that and you can use it in water tanks. So a leaky water tam tank won't be visible if it is a concrete tank. It has been nowadays replaced by syntax tank that is plastic tank. Underground reservoirs, there you have to have a concrete structure and if it is storing of good water and this water from outside that is the from the ground water 
enters into it, it might be a adulterated water. So, groundwater reservoirs, the concrete surrounding it or con concrete holding the reservoir should have damp proofing integrated within when it is made. The basements of buildings which are not for habitable use but for parking but for services it should not have lot of moisture embedded there. Foundation when you are making a foundation in a waterlogged area in a marshy area there you need to have the use of integrate integrated damp proofing. Surface treatment is also another way of damp proofing. When everything is done, it is not that you cannot make it further damp proof. You can add water repellent coating. So, the coating may be of similar materials which we discussed while we were discussing integral, integral damp proofing. So, plastering of exposed brick surfaces with water repellent chemicals, waterproofing agents like sodium or potassium silicates, aluminum or zinc sulphates, barium hydroxide and manganese sulphate sorry magnesium sulphate may be used for this surface treatment. Again as I mentioned you can use hot bitumen paint. This helps in waterproofing. It is done for even metal surfaces. It should be of a minimum thickness of around 3 millimeter and it can give a impervious coating, water repellent coating on top of the mother material or the material which you want to protect. Now we come to cavity wall construction. Now what is cavity wall? You have a main structure and then see the red wall here. This red wall is an additional wall that has been planned and made just in front of the inside wall or the main wall where the outer skin experiences a lot of weather action and it may be rain, it may be moist condition and a lot of water can even seep in but will get trapped into this cavity in form of moisture or in form of water and at the end you will see there is a hole, there is a gap through which this moisture can actually escape. So, it does not affect the inner wall. So, this is the inner wall which remains unaffected although the building is experiencing a lot of water or moist condition. So, continuous heavy showers are there particularly again in damp conditions like basements you can actually plan for such walls. What is the problem with it? It will take a lot of area. It is the it is usually 100 centimeters gap provided between the provided between the two walls and that has to be maintained hence you actually lose in area. It is space consuming and the cavity is usually 100 millimeter wide. Now, we also need to know some methods which 
we adapt when there is already a crack which has happened through which water can enter. So this is subject to you regularly visit the building or regularly maintain the building or else what will happen these will become very vulnerable points of decay. Now how to check those points through gunniting. Gunniting is depositing layer of rich cement mortar under pressure to the exposed surface it may be wall it may be pipes it may be concrete surface where actually there is a crack. So you are pushing in rich cement mortar which is we have seen in in, in membrane dam proofing it will act as a act as a barrier for the moisture to penetrate through those gaps. So you are actually filling in the gap. Now how can these, gap, these cracks happen? It can happen due to structural deformities. It may happen due to some leakages inside the building. So one has to monitor the building where it can happen they have to look for and then take such action. Similar is the method of pressure grouting. You can see in this picture there are some points where from the pressure grouting is done. You can see these points. So these are points where from injection of acrylic based polymer or cement mix is pushed in and repaired the crack. So usually they can be done in inaccessible parts like foundation, some portions where one cannot reach or that if the crack is quite deep in you can actually do pressure grouting and correct such locations so that further damp cannot penetrate. Some damage may happen but continuous exposure to sunlight can help escape the moisture which was trapped in. So through these slides actually we could bring you bring to you the different types of damp proofing. Now damp proofing is very important and damp proofing is a part of building maintenance maybe not as a part of building material but yes if one is very careful when they are making in the process the building is in the process of its making if you at right places apply the techniques then you may get eventually a building which will not require a maintenance for a long time. So one has to be very careful on which are the vulnerable points which I discussed in my previous lecture that is the sources of damp. So once you know the sources of damp when you are in the process of construction you must recommend these damp, damp proofing and the which type of damp proofing will be appropriate for that area. And as I told you gunniting and pressure grouting these are corrective measures which can be done at a later time. But eventually if you are taking steps from the very beginning you may not lead to any damp structure and you can get a damp free structure for a long period of time. So thank you.